Drosera verminoi, otherwise known as the tropical sundew, is a gorgeous sundew that you can add to your carnivorous plants collection. They only get up to two centimeters in diameter. However, they make up for their small size by living in the fast lane. They grow fast and they bloom very quickly as well. So in this video, I'll be shedding a bit of light on this sundew as well as discussing some expert care tips. For more quality carnivorous plants videos, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell icon to receive notifications of my new videos. Okay, so this is what the tropical sundew looks like up close. As you can see, it's quite a compact species. It's got very short, stubby, rounded leaves. And as with all sundews, they're characterized by having this glue-like substance covering the leaves. Now, if I touch one of those leaves with me toothpick, you get an idea of just how sticky they are. Have a look at that. See that? That's the stuff that secures prey and eventually digests it. Now, if I keep moving that, you should start to see some of those tentacles moving. They've got these tentacles called trip tentacles. And if I keep touching them, you might start to see some of those trip tentacles moving upwards. And those trip tentacles, their role is to push prey towards the center of the leaf where it's a lot more stickier. And I do see a lot of ants scurrying around sundews in the wild. So I would think that those trip tentacles are for ants. There we go. That, that trip tentacle came up by itself. So yeah, so these like, sundews are very special because they're one of the fastest moving sundews out there. I think they're the second fastest moving sundews. So yeah, not only do they look beautiful, but they're very special in the sense that they are very fast moving and that helps to them to secure relatively large prey items. So as I said earlier, some of these plants grow up to two centimeters across. These plants here in front of me, they're around about a centimetre across or smaller. These were manually planted by myself at the start of spring. Yet despite their small size, they're all coming up with these flower buds. Look at that. Some are quite brown, they're the older flowers, and they'll eventually turn into seed capsules. Then you see some here that have got a pinkish tinge. Now this one here on top, that's a fresh flower which has closed. They normally open up in the morning and they close by early afternoon. This is what the pink flowers look like. The flowers are self-pollinating, no, self meaning that they don't rely on bees or insects to pollinate the flowers. The flowers, by opening and closing, produce fertile seeds. Those seeds then are dispersed by wind and land on the peat moss and wherever they land of course that's where new plants emerge. And that's what I love about this species of sundew. It's a, in a constant state of flux. It's always changing. There's always new plants popping up where well, you least expect them. Now in nature this is an annual plant meaning that it will grow, flower and set seed and die all in the one growing season. The plant makes the most of the tropical rains. As soon as the rains subside, that's when the plant starts to die off. Of course, in your collection, water shouldn't be an issue. What will make the plants die off is the arrival of winter. And when the temperatures drop below around about 16 degrees, that's when I've noticed that my plants will start to die off. Of course, with all the seeds in the peat moss, there's always plenty of plants to come up in spring. And I have noticed as well, when plants are growing under the shelter of old Venus's flytrap leaves, some even survive through winter. Now look at this, this is pretty amazing. This just shows you just how large the prey items these sundews can catch. You can see here how there's this mosquito, large mosquito, which has legs trapped in this sundew here on the right, there's also um, the mosquito also has legs trapped on the sundew on the left. But it's quite a large mosquito compared to the plant. This one here on the right 
that's only about half a centimetre across. So that's what I love about these plants. It's amazing. You don't know what you're going to see trapped in those leaves. Okay, so this is another sundew. This is my one of my larger sundews, tropical sundews, growing in my collection. This one here is growing in my little carnivorous plant miniature garden. And you can see here how this, this plant here is around about two centimeters across, which is about as large as it, it gets. You can see also that the trip pinnacles are here. They stand out quite nicely against the dark background. And the, the plant itself is quite green when you compare it to the ones I was showing you earlier. Let's have a look over here. You can see here how they've got a reddish tinge here. See this one over here? And I'm pretty sure the reason being is because I did see a lot of prey items getting caught in this particular plant and as a result it's quite green and that's why it's grown quite large as well. And if you look carefully here you might see an ant, I think that's an ant there somewhere in the middle of that leaf and I do see ants, you can see ants coming around here, they're scurrying around on this raised garden bed and a lot of the times They'll scurry here and then they'll, you'll see one or two coming up here. So they do make their way up here. And together with the aphids that we had at the beginning of the spring, I'm sure these sundews have really had a good food. Now have a look at this. I want to show you here. I've got all these sundews growing here on my pumice rock. I put them there at the start of the season, early spring. And look at the beautiful effect when you have them all growing together. Yeah, especially when they have all that glue on the leaves, they really do shimmer nicely in the morning sun. And of course you see all the flower buds coming up here. Yeah, they like to, as I said, live in the fast lane. When conditions are going really well, they'll send up their flowers to spread seeds and yeah, really, really sort of spread spread themselves around a bit